Hello, I am Miss Alana, and for today's YAI Fine Art Activity, we are going to learn how to use soft pastels to create a very beautiful gradation background with a mountain foreground. So it is going to be a night landscape with soft pastels. And I'm going to list all of the materials we need for today's project, and then we can get started. So the materials we need for today's fine art activity is a piece of black paper. Mine is just like a simple construction paper. You need a set of pastels. Now my set kind of has a lot of colors, but pretty much all of what you need is some blues, some purples, and a black and a white. And as long as you have those colors in your set, you'll be good. You also need a piece of paper towel or tissue paper, toilet paper, um, even a piece of computer paper will work if you don't have anything else. Just something that we can use to rub our soft pastels into our paper. And then the final material we need is a marker. If you have a silver marker, you can use that. You can also use a white marker, a white gel pen, anything that you have that will show up on our black paper to create the stars at the final part of our landscape. So once you have all of your materials together, collected, we can start drawing our nighttime landscape. And here is our list of materials that I just talked about. And here is our inspirational photo for our art activity today. We have a beautiful picture of a night landscape with our mountains in the front. That is our foreground. And then the background is our beautiful night sky with the stars in it. And foreground means the part of a scene that is nearest to the observer, so that is our mountains. And the background is the part of a scene that is furthest from the viewer, so that's the sky. And I am going to refer to these terms throughout our art activity today. Right, so I have my piece of paper ready, and I have my set of soft pastels as well. And we are going to start by drawing the foreground. So depending on what colors you have, you want to use one of your darker blues. So I'm grabbing this navy one and I'm going to start by drawing a mountain on one side. And a mountain is basically just drawing a triangle. I'm going to draw a smaller one in the middle as well. I'm going to leave this color out because we're going to fill it in after we finish our base drawing. And now I'm going to grab a blue that's a little bit lighter than that one. I'm going to draw a slightly smaller mountain behind it. And keep that one on the side. And then finally I'm going to grab the black. I'm going to do a half circle type of hill shape over here. So for our foreground, we are going to have three mountains, two in a darker blue, one in a slightly lighter blue, and then this black hill. So now our next step is going to be to color these in. So I'm going to work with my lighter color first. I'm going to fill in this area. And with soft pastels, you don't want to press down too hard or you risk breaking the soft pastel itself. And you also don't have to rub too hard because in the end, we are going to blend everything together with our piece of paper towel. So if you have these black spots coming up in your paper that's fine because once we blend everything those will be gone and now our last color is the black 
and then we want to be careful while we're working with the black to not get it into our other colors but you want to make sure you get all your edges filled in as well so that's good enough for that and now we can start the first part of blending our colors so we have our foreground established. We are going to grab a piece of paper towel. I have it folded up like this. And what I like to do is pick one corner and I wrap it around my finger. And then this part is going to rub onto our paper. So we're going to start from our lighter color to our darker color. So then we don't, um, mess up anything. So my lighter color is here. I'm going to take this corner and lightly rub it into the grain of the paper. Being aware of those lines that I need at first. And if you have some dust collecting on your paper, you can blow it off. And now I'm going to wrap my paper towel on another part of my finger, get a nice clean side for your color. And use just light pressure going back and forth in different directions to rub all the soft pastel in. Blow with excess. And then now our last color for our foreground is the black. I'm going to rub this in. You can do circular motions as well. And what I'm going to do here on our edge is we're going to give it a texture effect to kind of look like it has a like grass on it. So I'm going to take this edge that's dirty and I'm going to push forward with it in small little bits. So it's going to blend into the blues a little bit, but it's just going to make that foreground look a little fuzzy. If you want it more defined, you can actually do some lines with your soft pastel. You can leave them like that, or you can go back and smooth out a little bit too. But now we have our nice hill in our foreground and our mountains, and then we can start working on our background. And by this time, our hands are already <laughs> getting a little messy. So if you want, you can take a break and go wash them off and grab a new piece of paper towel as well. All right, so now we are going to start working on our background. So we have our foreground established. We are going to do our background in the sky. And we're going to work in the same way that we did before. We're going to go from our lighter colors to our darkest at the top. So depending on what colors you have in your soft pastel kit, I am going to grab my lightest blue and start getting in between the mountains. So I'm just going to fill in these areas down here. And depending on how many colors and varieties and shades of blue you have is going to determine how many layers you will have in, my, in your sky. So that was my first color. I'm going to the next shade of a darker blue. And I'm going to do another band of color right on top of it. And they don't have to overlap because when we rub it in later, everything is going to blend. My next color is like a teal color. Do a line going across about the same size as the ones before. And now I'm going to grab the darker blue that we also used for our foreground. 
do another band and then I'm going to grab a purple if you didn't have um, as many blues as I did maybe if you had more shades of purple you can do more purple in your sky and then our very last one just at the top edge of our paper is going to be black so it's as if our sky has different layers of blue within it we are going from the lightest part up to our darkest part so now we have everything colored in we are going to grab our piece of paper towel and do the same pinching technique again and rub in our colors so we want to be aware of our foreground as we do this try your best not to get too much into the mountains themselves or into the hill but if you do it's okay you can always go back and fill some more in so for this point i am actually not changing the part of my paper towel that i am using because it is going to help me blend these colors into each other so as i go up i'm going across rubbing back and forth to get the colors to blend with not only each other but to rub into the fibers of our paper itself so just rubbing back and forth taking your time going up make sure you're getting all the way to the edge of your paper as you do it and then being very careful as we get to this top part with our black because we do not want too much of that going into the purple and then whatever excess you have you can blow it off or dump it into your trash that's near you and now that is it for our background and our foreground and we can start working on our final part which is adding some moon and stars into our sky at this point if your hands are really messy again you can wash them off or wipe them off with your towel and grab your marker that you're going to use as i said at the beginning you can use like a silver marker if you have one or a white gel pen or even the white oil pastel in your kit can be used for this part as well so i'm going to start by drawing my moon i'm going to do a like crescent moon right in the center of our picture and if you want you can draw it with a pencil beforehand you just want to get your outline first and then you can start to fill it in and depending on the marker it might bring up some of the fibers within your picture itself so just be careful with that if it's collecting on your paper you can rub it off with your paper towel define your edges so now I have my moon done you can start doing some stars I'm going to do a couple of dots all around first kind of just to establish some things in your background if you want you can draw a little just little crisscross stars different areas and as I said before you can grab your soft pastel and do some dots with it as well so now I have my 
silver dots, have some white dots for the stars. I'm going to make a couple of them bigger than the other ones. Give some variation to our drawing. And just keep placing them wherever you think it's best. And then once you are satisfied with your drawing, we are done. You can fix up any area you think might have gotten blended in too much, or maybe you lost some colors. At this time, you can go back in and adjust anything. But other than that, we are finished with today's fine art activity. And we can look at the drawing itself up close. We got some very beautiful gradation going on between our different colors of blues and teals and purples in our night sky. And overall, a very pretty soft pastel night landscape. So I want to thank you guys for joining me with this today. I hope you had fun and I will see you next time for our YAI Fine Art Activity. Hey there, it's Gabby, and as you can tell, this is not a picture of a common squirrel. This is a Sherman fox squirrel. Now, a regular squirrel might be a little intimidated by a Sherman fox squirrel because they're big. They're like twice the size of the common squirrel. They also have different coloring. They have beige bellies, gray backs, and the fur on their face is black. My sister actually took this picture here at Wakiva State Park. That's right. These squirrels actually live right here in Florida. The sad thing is that it's really, really rare to see them because they've lost a lot of their habitat to development and deforestation. The state of Florida has listed Sherman fox squirrels as a species of special concern, which means there's not many of them left. So today we're gonna learn how to draw a Sherman fox squirrel to raise awareness about these really cool animals. All you need in order to do this drawing is a piece of paper, a pencil, and a black pen. If you have colored pencils, you're welcome to color your squirrel in after the video. So when you first approach any drawing, you always want to start with pencil and by finding the basic shapes. So the first thing I see here is an oval, and this oval has a little bit of a slant forward. I'm going to go around with my pencil a couple times until I get an oval that I like. For the head, I'm gonna make another oval right on top of that first oval that I made. Now I'm gonna create the neck by connecting the two ovals. There is a little dip in between uh, those two ovals, so I'm gonna bring my pencil line down a little bit, and I'm gonna go around the squirrel's back, which is the side of the oval. For the head, I'm going to go around the top of the smaller oval, and then I'm just going to bring it around halfway. Now I need another little dip for the other side of the neck. Now we're moving on to the arms. So as you can see, these arms have a little bit of a bend to them. So I'm going to take my pencil and just start with a line, kind of just mapping out how the arms are going to go. And then from there, I'm gonna add a little width on either side. I'm gonna make the arms wider where they touch the body and then skinnier as they get closer to the wrist. It's a little tricky to see what I'm doing here, but I went ahead and gave our squirrel a tiny little hand by just adding some little squirrel fingers on the end of the arm. We will get a chance to clean that up later on. Next thing I did was add a line above my arm, indicating that there's another arm behind this first arm that we did. So that's just a little line. Now for the belly, I did a short line coming straight down. Onto the back leg, I just did a curved line starting a little bit up from the belly. And then I went ahead and put this long skinny oval at the bottom of it for the feet. For the front leg, I'm going to do the same thing, um, just starting a little further into my oval. So I have a curved line 
And I'm gonna add another skinny oval for the foot. Our squirrel feet look like little hot dogs right now, but that's okay, we'll fix them. It's time to help our squirrel look a little more squirrely by throwing in some ears and a tail. I'm gonna start with that back ear. I'm gonna make an upside down U coming out of the top of the head. And for the front ear, I'm gonna do a leaf shape and don't be afraid to overlap that back ear. Uh, we're gonna go over with pen and erase these pencil lines anyway. For the tail, I'm starting just above the feet and I'm gonna do the outside of the tail first. So what I made is like an S shape, a big curved line with a little swirl at the end. And now for the front of the tail, I'm just gonna connect it to the back. We're moving on to the little details now. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this squirrel an eye. I'm gonna do a leaf shape right there in the middle of the oval. I'm also gonna add a little spot where the light is reflecting off the eye by adding a small circle in the top right-hand corner of the eye. For the acorn, I'm gonna start with an upside down Hershey's kiss. And I'm not really afraid to draw over those that hand that I made. I can add that back in later. So there's my upside down Hershey's kiss. Now I'm gonna give it a little hat, um, or you could think of it like a squished Hershey's kiss sitting right on top. And now I'm craving chocolate. We're gonna go ahead and touch up our little feet here. We're gonna make them look less like hot dogs, more like squirrel feet. So I'm gonna keep the top of the foot curved, but I'm gonna add a flat line for the bottom of the foot. And that instantly makes it look a whole lot better. We're done with our pencil sketch, time to get out the black pen. So what I'm gonna do is go right over all the pencil lines I wanna keep. So you can see me going around the outside of the squirrel. I'm gonna go over the legs, the feet, the arms, the acorn, also the eye I'm gonna fill in, minus that little reflected part. The only thing I'm not gonna touch right now is the tail. I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a moment. And it's tail time. So instead of just going over the solid line that we made for the shape of our tail, we're gonna make it look nice and fluffy. So starting at the point of the tail that touches the back of the squirrel, I'm gonna make short lines just going the same direction of the tail. And then from there, I'm gonna add a bunch of short lines just kind of poking out. So I'm actually gonna erase that pencil line so that's not gonna be there. This whole tail is just gonna look big and fluffy. Once you have your tail done, you can grab your eraser, and this is my favorite part. We're gonna go ahead and rub out all of those pencil lines. One little thing that I missed was the squirrel's toes. So after I was done erasing, I grabbed my pen, just add a couple little lines at the front of the feet for the toes. We're all done. Thanks so much for drawing with me today. And remember, if you are lucky enough to spot a Sherman Fox Squirrel at a state park or in your backyard, make sure that you let them know that we're rooting for them. Hello, this is Pia from West Sanford. Let's begin with our number two pencil and sketch in the shape of our apple very lightly. And I say lightly because we're going to use very little pressure on our pencil. And then we're going to draw in our dark areas, the darkest area of your apple with your pencil very lightly, all as a guideline. These lines will disappear as you fill in your colors. With your red pencil, again, even stroke, light pressure, let's begin with our darkest areas. 
fill them in. And when you do your strokes, make sure that there's not too much white space between them. Keep them even and steady. Now with our red orange pencil, we're going to do our secondary layer, which is the middle range color. Okay. And let's fill in the areas and don't forget to overlap. So you do not create an edge of color, overlap your colors. With your blue pencil, let's begin our dark areas. We're going to fill in our dark areas with a light pressured strokes. For the bottom of the apple, we will put more pressure because that is the darkest area of the apple. And let's start filling in our shadow. With your red pencil, you're going to go over those dark areas you just did with a little more pressure on your pencil. <clears throat> and again, <clears throat> and again, make sure that when you put more pressures on the dark areas, for the light areas, put less pressure. And always make even up and down strokes. Put more pressure to darken your layer. Light pressure for the lighter areas. Even strokes up and down with very little white space between them. With your blue pencil, outline your dark areas fill in putting more pressure for the darkest areas light pressure for the lighter areas of your apple with your yellow pencil give the apple the whole apple a complete layer very light the yellow will not come through, but what it will do is to brighten all your layers. And now I'm doing my red pencil again, and I'm going to start filling in my dark areas, putting a little more pressure for the dark areas. And for these this layer I am going to do cross hatching. That means I am going to go in the opposite direction that I have been doing my strokes. And this will provide a richer color. Make sure that you overlap so you do not have visible edges. On your next layer, again, more pressure and you slowly begin to develop your colors. For your light areas, lighter pressure. Dark areas, more pressure. And always keep your pencil point sharp. And as we develop our apple, you'll see that we don't have any edges, that we're not drawing an edge and then filling in color. We are going to have no edges when we're done. 
and we shall take a green pencil and start indicating our leaf and with the brown and yellow you can do the stem of the apple but with the green do a flat even layer outline it with your yellow pencil and your dark areas of the leaf use a darker green and if that's not enough use a blue pencil over the green and now with your red orange pencil go over your apple As you can see, we have developed our red color. And you can also see there's no trace of that yellow, but your red has become sharper and brighter. Remember, light pressure on the lighter areas overlap and more pressure on your darker areas. to the end of our apple drawing hope you've enjoyed this session bye bye hi everyone it's miss lee and this is another episode of lee's lessons today we are going to do painting using q-tips so what we're going to do is like i've told you many times the best thing is, this, is if you have some sort of reference material. And I looked at some of the other Q-tip um, pieces that other people had done, and I like how they look when you're doing them for fall. And I'm going to just do one tree like this, um, the tree, and then I do like having the ground there as well. So obviously I have a brush because the brush is going to make it easier for me to at least do the tree. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to take the brush and I am going to make my tree trunk, okay, like so. I probably need a little bit more water, okay. And then I can go ahead and I can put some, get a little bit more water there, and I can start doing, see how easy it is to do branches? I can just go ahead and bring up my tree trunk and do some branches and little branches out there. And the bottom line is these are gonna be covered up with some of our Q-tips anyway. So, in, and if you ever look at a tree, the branches go everywhere. It's crazy, there's no right or wrong when you're doing a tree. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna leave that like so, and I'm going to grab my Q-tips. So I think what I'll do for starters is I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry a little bit. So I'm gonna do my grass. So I'm gonna um, dip my Q-tip in the dark green and then all you're doing is dabbing it onto the paper or the canvas that you're doing, okay? And then as soon as it starts getting lighter color, which really isn't that bad because you're gonna see lighter or darker colors in the grass, but then when you, when you start running out of paint, you just dip it back into the paint, okay? This is called toothpick, or toothpick, I'm sorry, Q-tip painting, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and make that my grass ground. And as you can see, I also have another color of green. 
and I'm going to, instead of, well, I guess I can use this Q-tip. I'll flip it around to the other side, and I'm gonna put in some of that lighter green in there. Not too much. This is just gonna be my, let's call this my highlight, you know, or my when the sun hits my leaves or the grass on the ground, you get a lighter color. So I'm not gonna put that much in there because I want my fall colors. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start putting my fall colors in onto, and I'm gonna go ahead and put these guys underneath there. Okay, I'm gonna put my fall colors. And I've already mixed up an orange because I don't have an orange in the set that I have here. I've got my gold and I've got my red. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start with my orange. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start putting in my orange leaves everywhere. And I've got lots and lots of paint. So I'm gonna be able to put lots and lots of orange leaves in there, okay? And this is a really super easy um, way for you to paint. Um, imagine what it would be like if you were going to paint all those leaves separately. So this is super easy, and I'm sure you've probably got Q-tips at home. So if all you need for this is paint, paper, and Q-tips. And you could do this with watercolors as well. So if you've got watercolors at home, you're just gonna get not, um, you can tell that the acrylic paints are more opaque. And what opaque means is they're more solid and you don't see through them as much as you would with the watercolor. But you could surely do this with watercolor as well. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and for time's sake, I'm gonna go ahead and do my one half of my tree here. So let me get a little bit more of the orange. And now I'm gonna flip it over to the red side and I'm gonna get some red in there. Get some, some red leaves in there. Fill out my tree a little bit here. So like I said, for sake of time, ooh, and my, my toothpicks, my toothpick, my Q-tip's getting a little squirrely at the end. So I'm gonna take it along my plate and just rub it so I get it so that it's not um, giving me those little end pieces or uh, looks like a hair hanging off when you get a hair off a paintbrush. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then I'm gonna go down here and put some down here on the ground as well. Okay, since I'm using it and then flip it over. I should have done that with my orange. So I'm gonna put some orange leaves down here. And I'm even gonna I'll put some up against the tree trunk there because you do see that sometimes. All right, so both ends are used there. I'm gonna grab a, a brand new Q-tip. I'm gonna add my yellow and then I'm gonna start adding yellow to it. Okay, it looks like the yellow is a little less opaque, meaning a little more transparent. The lighter colors tend to be that way. So I'm gonna need to add a little bit more paint onto my Q-tip so that my yellow stump stands out a little better. Okay, and I'm dabbing it on top. This is also another version of what we talked about in my previous video, um, impressionistic painting. It's giving an impression of the leaves. I'm not doing every detail, every angle of the leaves, but you know that that's what this is. This is a, a fall tree. This is an impression of the leaves. This is an impressionistic type of painting. Okay, so we've done half of our, um, half of our tree here, and then I can, when I have time, do the other half. So grab some Q-tips, grab some paint, grab some paper, and have fun.